Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to chapter 7 of the conceptual framework for financial reporting. And conceptual framework for financial reporting deals with 8 chapters and chapter 7 is on presentation and disclosure. A reporting entity communicates information about its um, liabilities, equity, income and expenses by presenting and disclosing information in its financial statement. Therefore, effective communication of information in financial statement makes information more relevant and contributes to a faithful representation. What is effective communication in financial statement? Basically, under this chapter, it requires the reporting entity to focus presentation and disclosure objectives in the financial statement and the principles rather than focusing on the rules. It also requires classifying information in a manner that groups similar items and separates similar items. We'll go into that detail later. Aggregating information in such a way that it is not obscured by either by uh, unnecessary detail or by uh, excessive aggregation. And what is most important is also to consider the cost constraint of presenting or disclosing a particular information so that the benefits will always outweigh the cost of doing so. To facilitate effective communication, what is more important is when developing presentation and disclosure requirement in standards, a balance is needed between giving the entities, the reporting entities, the flexibility to provide relevant information that faithfully represent their elements of financial statement that is asset, liabilities, equity, income and expenses and requiring that uh, information requiring information that is comparable uh, both from period to period uh, and for a reporting entity that is also for single reporting period across entities under the same industry and uh, including presentation and disclosure objectives in standards will support effective communication according to the conceptual framework as uh, also that will consider the following principles uh, entity specific information must be considered as that will provide more useful information than the standardized types of description Duplication of information in different parts of the financial statement is usually unnecessary and can make financial statement less understandable. So there should be a balance between duplication as well as providing and disclosing information that is useful. Before we can disclose or present the financial statement, what is more important is the classification itself. What is classification? It is the sorting of assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses on shared characteristics for presentation and disclosure purposes. For example, if you talk about a property plan and equipment as the presentation in the statement of financial position, the classification is under the property plan and equipment and therefore the assets are being grouped under property plan and equipment like uh, asset like motor vehicle land building equipment uh, because they share the same characteristics similar characteristics include but are not limited to the nature of the item its role or function within the business activities conducted by entity and also how it is being measured, the measurement of the, uh, the uh, assets, liabilities, income, or, or expenses, and equity. 
The concession framework also pointed out that classifying sim dissimilar uh, elements of assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses together can obscure relevant information, which is the fundamental characteristic of financial statement, can also reduce understandability and comparability and may not provide faithful representation, which is also very vital to to be achieved, that is also the fundamental qualitative characteristics of financial statement. So we should achieve what we purport to represent. What we purport to represent must be achieved. Let's move to the classification of assets and liabilities. Under conceptual framework, classification is applied to unit of account. I think you are familiar with the term unit of account, which are selected for asset or liability. It may be sometimes appropriate to separate asset or liability into components, and uh, as long as they um, and also classify them separately if they have different characteristics. Classifying that separately is appropriate to enhance the usefulness of the resulting financial information to the users of financial statement like uh, investor, uh, lenders and other creditors. For example, it could be appropriate to separate an asset or liability into current and non-current component. So non-current asset will normally include long-term assets, which are more than a year. And uh, current asset will normally be uh, shown to, sh uh, to present the asset which are less than a year. And also to classify those components separately. This is another important uh, point that is highlighted in the conceptual framework regarding offsetting. Under the conceptual framework, it prescribed that offsetting occurs when an entity recognizes and measures both the asset and liabilities as separate units of account, but they group the uh, asset into a single net amount, let's say that is in the statement of financial position. For example, you have accounts receivable uh, and at the same time that is a current asset. And then you also have the accounts payable. So that is uh, being measured and reported as a separate units of accounts. Uh, but um, what happened is in the statement of financial position, you later uh, just present the net of account receivable after deducting the net of accounts payable into a, sing a single net amount in the statement of financial position. This is not allowed in the um, conceptual framework. Offsetting classify these similar items together and therefore is generally not appropriate. And offsetting of assets and liabilities is actually the, the is not the same as treating a set of rights and obligation as a single account. For example, a set of rights and obligation are treated in a single account under MFRS uh, 15, which is revenue from contract with customer. Uh, but that is uh, different from offsetting the dissimilar items together. Let's move to classification of equity. And under the conceptual framework, it is useful uh, for the uh, reporting entity to classify equity claims separately if they have different characteristics. So if you can look at the statement of changes in equity, for example, you will see that um, the preference share capital are classified separately from the ordinary or the uh, ordinary or the common shares, ordinary share capital. And it may be necessary to comply components of equity separately if some of the, those components are subject to a particular legal, regulatory or other requirements. Uh, for example, the case of redeemable preference shares that are being um, presented as 
non-current uh, liabilities, right? That is due to the uh, the uh, requirements that uh, we need to comply with. For example, in some jurisdiction, entity is uh, permitted to make distribution to holders of equity claims. These are the example from the conceptual framework that is allowed for the entity that has sufficient reserves specified as distributable. So dividends can only be, be uh, distributed to the uh, equity shareholder, like ordinary shareholder, uh, from the uh, distributable reserve uh, that is in certain jurisdiction. Separate presentation or disclosure of those reserves may provide useful information. Next, we move on to classification of income and expenses. And uh, to classify income and expenses uh, is actually, income and expenses actually result from the unit of account uh, selected for an asset or liability or components of, of such income and expenses. If those components have different characteristics. Okay, um, the unit of account, if you can still recall, that refers to the words used to describe the specific assets and liabilities reported in the financial statement rather than the units used to measure them. So you would see that, for example, in the line item in the statement of profit or loss, the admin expenses um, are being uh, the... Uh, classification but the units of account under admin of uh, expenses are normally the depreciation uh, the um, perhaps the uh, depreciation uh, um, the auditors fees any expenses being written off or uh, any other uh, maybe admin costs that are included so basically those are the unit of account but it was all together being group under admin expenses or admin costs. So does the case of the uh, item in the property plan and equipment where you have different item under property plan and equipment uh, and later it was classified, the property plan and equipment was classified under non-current asset. Uh, that is uh, the uh, classification that relates to the soft statement of financial position. But when we relate to income here, for example, you have other income. Other income is the classification. And when you look at the gain on disposal, and that is uh, part of other income too. The changes in the fair value uh, of uh, the uh, items like in investment property, the gain on that changes is also presented under other income. So the changes in current value can also include effects of value changes and accrual of interest. So that is appropriate to be classified into components separately. If doing so would enhance the usefulness of the information. So income and expenses, we now come to the profit or loss and other comprehensive income, which is the uh, statement of financial performance in the case of conceptual framework. It is what being referred to as statements of financial performance. Income and expenses are classified and included in the statement of profit or loss or the SOPL as the acronym or outside the statement of profit or loss. So up till the profit for the year that is still within the statement of profit or loss but starting from uh, those items that you call other comprehensive income that is considered as outside the statement of profit or loss. The um, statement of profit or loss is very important because that is the primary source of information that serves as the main in indicator of our entity's financial performance. Either the company has uh, spent a lot on their expenses um, and also how does the company generate their revenue. You can always refer to the statement of profit or loss because that reflects the financial performance for that reporting period as at the end it contains the total profit uh, for that company or maybe just the loss incurred by the company. So income and expenses, if you can still recall that, arise on a historical cost measurement basis, but they are included 
also in the statement of profit or loss. In exceptional circumstances, income and expenses arising from a change in current value of an asset or liability. This is like in the case of re-evaluation of assets under the property plan and equipment or under intangible assets where the surplus on revaluation or the revaluation surplus uh, the when the asset is being revalued upward the changes are included in the other comprehensive income because according to the conceptual framework you can do so if that provides more relevant information and a more faithful representation of the entity's financial performance for that period uh, last, this is uh, the, one of uh, the few last bit which is aggregation what is actually aggregation? In simple terms, aggregation is just when we add together assets, liabilities, equity, income or expenses that have shared characteristics and they are include, included in the same classification. So you classify items uh, under the uh, correct um, classification. For example, here, aggregation makes information more useful by summarizing a large volume of detail, although it may conceal some of that detail. So therefore, what is important is to strike a balance uh, between that um, providing summarized uh, large volume of detail and also providing useful information. So that relevant information is not obscured by that large amount of insignificant detail or by excessive aggregation so um, different level of ag aggregation may be needed in different parts of the financial statement too um, as uh, for example typically the statement of financial position and statement of financial performance provide summarized information and a more detailed information so if you can recall the format or the presentation of the statement of uh, financial performance or statement of financial position for example it does not simply show the total asset the total asset is being divided into non-current and current asset and even the non-current asset has its further classification which is um, actually uh, the uh, aggregation by adding together those assets and liabilities uh, and that one is being done in the statement of financial position and statement of financial performance so that it could provide summarized information and a more detailed information are being provided in the notes to the financial statement. So in the notes to the financial statement itself, also will give some other details regarding those items that are um, presented in the uh, statement of financial position and the uh, statement of profit or loss, statement of changes in equity, statement of uh, cash flows, for example, if that also is also part of the, the reporting entity's financial statement. Okay, you just complete a chapter 7. There's one more to go now uh, well, congratulations i will see you when i'll see you and with that i thank you for watching and assalamualaikum and bye bye